lounging, son. Welcome back to the Comic Lounge. My name's Ryan, and with me today, I have a really awesome guest. I have Steve Levine, a uh, major contributor to uh, All Things Turtles. Super excited to have you on. Um, welcome to the show, man. Hey, happy to be here, Ryan. Happy to be here. So, you know, I always ask people the first time I'm talking with them, you know, kind of what started your love for the comic book medium? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to just change that a little bit. I didn't have a great love for the comic book medium. My initial love was similar to comics. I, I want Mad Magazine. Okay. That was, uh, it, that would have been my world. I would have loved to have gone in, you know, in high school when I met Kevin, my stuff looked like Don Martin's from, from Mad Magazine. That's the type of stuff I wanted to do. Very fortunate that Kevin asked me to jump on the, on board back then. But uh, yeah, I probably would have been leaning more towards that type of art as opposed to comics. Right on. And, uh, you know, it's funny, you you know, you mentioned you went to high school with Kevin. You know, I've seen um, in interviews and stuff that Michelangelo's personality was based on you loosely a little bit. Well, the hairline, for sure. I mean, this, if this was green, you know, for sure, I'd look just like him. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, it was funny that that kind of came up um, at cons. Occasionally, a fan would come up and Kevin had mentioned in an, pre uh, the documentary, had mentioned in an interview that, yeah, you know, my Mikey's personality was based on me. And I just think it was huge. a lot of our stuff that happened and because Kevin and I lived together in the early days. Uh, so a lot of the stupid stuff that I might say probably got put into his mouth or one of the other turtles, you know, all that type of stuff. But it was funny to hear that definitive moment in the uh, uh, documentary, you know, to kind of have him say, yeah, it's based on blah, blah, blah. And they're like, oh, OK, all right, I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Mikey was always like one of my one of my favorites, uh, you know, growing up as a kid, like from the show and stuff. And uh, so I just thought that that was kind of interesting because it's something I discovered recently that 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 was said, you know. And, you, you know, you say you're, that comic books weren't necessarily your thing, but you started lettering for the Turtles. And also, you're the first, like, employee that Mirage hired besides Peter and Kevin. Well, well, yeah, I mean, it was pretty close to just after high school. So Kevin and I were, were still in touch in, um, excuse me, <clears throat> he was doing the lettering in the early books. Mm. He hated doing the lettering in the early, other than the sound effects, those are always fun to do. But, you know, any of the word balloons and all that other stuff. So, uh you know, he asked me if I wanted to do it. And I, again, I said, I don't know how to do comic book lettering, Kevin. And he gave me an Ames lettering guide and a, you know, just took a ruler. He said, you know, da -da, you know, show me the basics. I practiced a little bit, um, not as much as I probably should have. Uh, and then uh, I had to meet Pete. So I met them at the, their, their very first con in New Hampshire uh, to get, you know, the official year in, uh, I had to be picked by Pete as well. So luckily Pete found me, uh, okay to join the team. Uh, but yeah. And I joined a few months after that. And what was it like kind of back then? Cause I mean, you're joining before the explosion really in pop culture with the turtles. Yeah. Well, it's funny. Like I said, me and Kevin went to high school together. So my parents were not real happy that I was running away with Eastman to do something stupid. Cause I had a pretty good job. And but that changed over the years pretty quickly. Um, but my thought was at that point, I had to sure I had a good job, I, you know, whatever. But I this is an opportunity to try something that I would never probably get the opportunity to do later on in life. Um, may not have the desire at that point. Still had a lot of, you know, want to do something creative and something artistic. So, uh, you know, it was really cool. So, yeah, it was very strange to take the chance. The book was just still the black and white book. I. I physically was living there and not officially working on a book, but on issue three, but issue five is the first book I actually, you know, worked on lettering and, and stuff. So um, I was there for a little while. I was answering fan mail. My bedroom was Mirage studio. That's where the copier and desk was um, in mine and Kevin's apartment. So yeah, it was, it was just weird and fun. We used to count the books. We had a lot of fun. I mean, all the way through, all the way through we had a lot of fun but back in the old days it was just us three just being goofy and dumb and doing you know killing time in between work you know which is a lot of fun yeah definitely like from just like the pictures and stuff and all the stories that like have been throughout you know like whether it's interviews or like the turtle documentary it just looked like 
so much fun and like everybody was always having a blast i mean how, how could you not you know uh, yeah i mean when when i'll meet a fan at a, at a con or something they'll come up and thank me for their child their childhood and it was you know the turtles are so great but they had so much fun playing turtles and we're like we were having as much fun making them even though when it was chaotic it was still so much fun you know we had a good you know team in the studio of people and it was i you know i mean there are moments like anything that you go oh I got to do that again today, but very, very, very seldomly, you know, um, for the most part, it was just, again, we had a good group of people, you know, uh, all the guys and the core guys in the, in the studio and in the office and everybody, it was just a lot of fun all the way around. And you, you know, you lettered, but then I know you also colored some of the, I mean, you're also an artist in your own right too, but like you start coloring. So like, how do you get from the lettering into the coloring and how does that kind of progression in terms of like the art you're doing as well? Yeah. Well, I mean, again, I mean, I was doing that on my own anyways. That was something, like you say, I've always done this stuff. So I would occasionally like on the side, color a few, uh, I, I, Xerox some of Kevin and Pete's stuff and color it just for the fun of it, you know, for practice and stuff like that. And then when first comics decided to do uh, the, the full color graphic novels, the very first one, um, Kevin, you know, committed to coloring the very first issue. And then um, they farmed it out to a couple of the other kind of traditional comic book colorists, not like fully painted stuff, just kind of uh, green, red, you know, those type of things that you saw in kind of regular um, pulp you know, type comics, not the higher end ones. So I assisted Kevin on the first book. I cut the frisk of paper. I laid flat colors. I, you know, got everything, you know, kind of got the lay of the land with what he was doing. And when the second one came around, because they couldn't do it, Kevin and Pete, and they knew I could, I didn't know I could. So I simply said yes, um, because that's what you do when you're young and dumb. Um, you say yes a lot. And you do it, you know, so that's kind of what I did. So, uh, it, I mean, it was crazy. Once I got started getting like stacks of pages, I, you know, you start feeling overwhelmed, but you did, you know, you may, you plow through, I'm trying to think. And then I continued, I think I did every other graphic novel and there were three issues, each, each graphic novel that I was coloring and they'd come out, I think almost quarterly for a while there, you know, so it was, it was a lot of work. I mean, there were times where, uh, again, me and Kevin were living together We'd have, we'd buy beer and pizza, invite Mike Dooney, uh, Ryan Brown, Dan, any Dan Berger, uh, Jim Lawson, anybody who could get away to come over and help lay flats. And so I could just take the pages and kind of try to finish them off when deadlines got tight. That, I know that happened once, maybe twice. I'll go, I'll go once, but probably <laughs> twice. Uh, but again, that, I, that just was, again, the beauty of it. It was a lot of fun. You know, nobody was bitching about getting paid. It was a slice of pizza and a beer there. And, you know, it was fun. It was a good time. So what was it like for you? Like, I mean, like, you're not a huge, you're not into comics, right? But like, you're creating these comics that are blowing up and now are going to, like, they're starting to become a pop culture phenomenon, you know, with the toys and the show, which is like how I discovered Turtles, you know, like, I didn't even know it was a black and white comic until well into my youth you know and i was yeah, like yeah, and yeah. then i remember reading it i'm like what the fuck like this is awesome this is this is not the turtles that i knew like i'm like oh this is more like the <laughs> 90s movie like now i see why that one was so much darker you know they literally took it from the book yeah yeah, yeah. um well I, I won't say that i was a a comic virgin by the time i re really got into it because i mean living with kevin he had crates milk crates of uh of comics and I'd go in and grab like an entire run of the X-Men or of Daredevil and I'd bring them back into my room and that's what I'd read at night, you know, like, so I kind of got a little bit of an education and found out that, you know, Jack Kirby was, was God and that I should always, you know, love God. And, <laughs> you know, so that, and of course Miller, you know, that influence, you know, that, you know, the, that Kevin pulled in and, and all their different influences was, kind of spoon fed to me, which was nice because it was a lot of the cream of the crop. You know, I didn't have yeah. to read all the crappy stuff. Um, so I, I won't go in as a total virgin when I when I was there, you know, uh, about a few weeks in, I was I was pretty well versed in comics and continued to buy and appreciate comics. But yeah, it's funny, though. I mean, one of the comics I collected was uh, was Groot, Sergio Argonis. Yes, I love Mad that book. Magazine, from Mad Magazine, you know, yeah. so I mean, you can see where my my allegiance still goes back there, you know, but um, yeah. it, it's, you know, just that. But um, 
I forgot where I might have gone off on a tangent there uh, on that answer. It's all right. Well, you know what? Let's. Uh, I'll just talk about okay. this then. You know, like um, yeah. So becoming a fan of comics, like after you're already, you know, out of high school, is kind of interesting. You know, because like nowadays, I feel like sometimes people are getting into comic books later because it's not as readily accessible as it once was. Yes, there are comic shops you can go to, but they're not in grocery stores. They're not in drug stores. There's no newsstands. Yeah. Exactly. So it's interesting to, you know, to hear that even back then when they were accessible, this just wasn't something that you looked for. So what was that like becoming a fan later, you know, like kind of as an adult already? Yeah, I mean, as a kid, I, I, I should say I probably had a couple of comics, but not 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 a collector, not a, yeah. you know, religiously buying uh, Batman or Daredevil or Spider-Man or any of those things. Um, it was really interesting because, again, and I found it harder later on as a comic reader, I was getting the books, you know, they weren't collecting books like they do now. So I would have an entire run. I could get a whole storyline or a story arc by a certain writer or art, art team that I really enjoyed looking at. And, and then all of a sudden switch, you know, and I might go grab something else, you know, buy the a similar artist or something from Kevin's stuff or ask him. Um, so it, it was, it was very interesting in that, in that way. And then I was again, spoiled because yeah, I could read a whole run. And then when I started, you know, was buying comics as a regular reader, uh, I got to wait. I have to wait to find out where this goes, you know, and you see, especially like, you know, the dark night and stuff when that was going on. How long do we have to wait? You know, you know, I'm, a, I'm sure like people felt about the last Ronin, you know, when that was off schedule yes. and chaos and I would have been losing my mind, you know, as a reader, you know, like I, I was a reader of the comic, but, you know, not die hard like that you know like I, I you know when i think about a run of a book that i was reading back then haha you you're almost jonesing for it the second you get done when you, you're at the last page and like ah oh, really? Yeah. really 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 you know so yeah it was it was interesting and, and again i i think it gave me a great love of of the medium and again because of what i was getting fed i wasn't getting fed just bleh i was getting yeah. most of the Stuff, you know i was getting you know so it was kind of nice well, yeah like you said the cream of the crop i mean like that was such a great era of comics obviously like i came to it later um but it is it's and there's no internet back then so like you don't even know what a book no. like why it's late so there's you're just like waiting and wondering and plus like you know right. it's, it's crazy like the difference of then into now like even as a kid like i've gone back when i'm organizing and i see gaps and i'm like why why didn't I have that issue? You know, it's like, oh, that must have been wrong. I was still getting it from newsstands. I didn't have a right. playlist, all that kind of stuff. What yeah, do you, yeah, yeah. you know, like you talk Kirby, you talk Miller. Um, what do you start kind of like getting into that on your own without kind of getting them from Eastman? Yeah, I think we all were kind of into uh, a lot of the, you know, the stuff that was kind of happening in that time. What was, what was the hot books at the time? I mean, uh, it's hard to you know the years all blur together <laughs> yeah. as i'm like let's see when did uh like marvels came out you know alex ross around that you know in that time frame you know that type of stuff was happening sinkevich you know we were finding sinkevich's stuff and getting to meet them through you know the popularity of the turtles that was the other thing i mean we we hung out with miller in mid-ohio you know and wow. he it was pre-dark night and he showed us penciled pages at breakfast, me and Kevin from the dark night, you know, and we were like, holy shit, you know, wow, you're doing Batman, you know, so <laughs> it, it was very cool, you know, in that way. And, and because Kevin and Pete were their own thing, they got a lot of respect from all those guys, you know, like, I mean, we were good friends with Steve Bissett. He was a Vermont boy. So he was kind of close to where we were in Western Mass. So we love, you know, love seeing, you know, this man come down and hang out and, you know, uh, you know, it was a lot of fun, you know, so, but I mean, it influenced what I bought too, you know, I was, then I, you know, I know this, you know, I know this, I'm going to be buying Swamp Thing now, you know, and that type of stuff, so, and of course, Alan Moore was writing it, you know, uh, Watchmen, you know, you got Dave Gibbons, you get a lot of different styles, which I thought, I think that was great, and then we got that kind of weird, and I don't want to say, uh, you know, the image, everybody's muscular and huge, and all the styles look the same. I thought that, you know, we had that time period with Sienkiewicz and Miller and, and, and Gibbons and all these different artists, uh, Mazzuchelli, you know, different things like that, that were just cool to look at, you know. And, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I always appreciate, I think as, as an artist, I appreciate the difference when everything, if everything looked exactly the same, it, it would be meh. 
you know, it's cool to see what somebody does with the characters and how they how they handle them and how they draw them and write. Them, you know, so I totally agree. I love when like I hate I hate to say this too, but like when there's just like that generic like house style that some yeah. people will say with like the big two. I love when you get like a like right now like Daniel Warren Johnson. His art is just phenomenal. You know, it's completely different than everything else, and it stands <laughs> out. So when you yeah. see it. You know who that is. It's like Sinkevich. When you see a Sinkevich piece, you know it's Sinkevich. Yeah. You don't question it. Chris Samney is one of my, you know, yes. like I'll buy, I'll buy literally anything he does right now. You know, like I, I hands down, just like, wow. I mean, and I know it, it reminds everybody, you know, um, why am I drawing a blank? Uh, of Mignola, you know, of course, you know, because he uses those blacks and stuff. But I mean, just his, I don't know. I don't know. I, I it's just so real, and I know something about it. I just love his stuff. Love his stuff. Yeah, I totally agree. There's certain books where, like, you, I'll buy it for the art. It doesn't even need to have words. You know, yeah, <laughs> I'll yeah. buy the book. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so let's talk about. You kind of mentioned too, like that you were the one handling the fan mail. Yeah, in the early days. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, like I like tacos. Do you like tacos? Yes, I like tacos. You know, you had to answer it like a turtle to the kids. Yeah, I, I did some of that in the early days. Yeah, yeah. And filling the orders of the iron ons and the lead figures that you know Kevin and Pete had gotten uh, produced. You know, through different you know entities and stuff like that. So yeah, I did a lot of that stuff in the early. Was there any and, like? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was gonna say anything that they needed to get done and they didn't feel like doing it any longer. Well, hey, Steve will do it. You know, I, I was fine with that. Was there any, uh, I mean, that you can remember, like any fan mail that was kind of funny that that really stood out to you, or was it all just kind of? A lot I of wish it, it wasn't that much. As, you know, it, as it got, you know, I think of like I know you just talked to Dan Berger, and yeah. I know Dan, uh, you know, did that for the adventure series. That there was, you know, a buttload. We get an occasional kids' letter. Most of them were. You know, Pete and Kevin would print the letters in the book. So most of them were, you know, older, you know, teenage and up people. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so I didn't answer those. Those just kind of got answered by Kevin and Pete. But I got the, you know, I like tacos. Do you like tacos? You know, my favorite turtle. You know, you're like, yes, yeah, we like tacos. Yes. All the turtles like tacos. You know, those type of answers. Okay. You know, just kind of generic ones. So I didn't do... As much as like Dan handled, he had that they they got all that great artwork and all that stuff. We got an occasional piece of artwork, but you know, not not a whole bunch. Yeah, and you yeah. so you also were responsible for like a lot of the artwork for like the licensed TMNT stuff, like the video game, the toys, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, me me and Ryan Brown did did uh, you know I like to say for, I don't know around sixty or seventy percent of the stuff that came out you know had something that we we drew or on it so. And what was, so what was that like kind of doing the, that type of stuff and like working with like stuff like Burger King and you know, obviously Playmates and, and then creating some of those other mutant characters? Like I, I mean, again, it was a, a blast, you know, it's a dream job, you know, like, um, you know, the licensing, I mean, I eventually became the licensing art director for the company, which was basically, I say, okay, uh, right colored bandana, uh, right initial on the belt buckle, one, two, three fingers, one, two toes, perfect. You know, that was kind of Kevin and Pete weren't overly, uh, you know, initially overly, uh, they didn't want a, a, any licensee to be turned off by not getting their product put out, or let's say. So um, later on, I think as me and Ryan kind of got a style and a look for everything, that's that's when things really kind of came, came came back to us, you know, where the companies were like, you know, hey, I don't want to not, I don't want to have to wait a couple months if you guys create the art, it's pre-approved, you know, because it's coming directly from us. And we're like, yeah, so that's why we did a lot of it. You know, they didn't wouldn't have to go find a go find a freelance illustrator, have them do their version. If it doesn't work out, then they have to make changes this way. They asked for what they wanted. We did the art and they got it and it, and it went out and it was right away, you know, so there was no back and forth. And again, pre-internet, uh, you know, computer stuff. So it was, oh, at best we can get this to them in two days, you know, FedEx, you know, and, and then the two days back. And then, you know, so you're playing time all the time. So, uh, yeah, you know, that was a lot. It was a lot of fun. You know, it was a lot of fun doing that stuff. And, you know, the video games were always a blast. Uh, Again, they would come to uh, us, which was nice uh, if it was Konami 
they'd have an, a general idea of what they were looking for. Then we do a sketch, send it to them it, with the bigger jobs like that, you know, and they'd approve or not approve, make the changes. And then we go to town, you know? Um, so it was, it, it was, it was a lot of fun. Like I said, to see that stuff. I remember one Christmas, my, uh, I think one of the characters came out, I saw bananas or something. We were in the toy store shopping for our kids for Christmas. And my wife, Denise, uh, sees a lady pick up Sergeant Bananas. And so she walks over to her and says, my husband created that character. And the lady looked like, like she was horrified. Why is this woman talking to me? And she was, and, and, uh, and Denise is so proud. And I just shook my head and she walked out. I'm like, she's not gonna care, she's not gonna. But it was so, for us, it's very cool to see it. You know, I remember the first issue five when, that, when I started in a comic book shelf, you know? I mean, I had already counted the books back at Mirage before they got shipped out. So it's not like I wasn't seeing the book for the first time. Yeah. You know, it's just cool to see it in its in its natural environment, you know, out in the wild, you know, as opposed to, you know, at the studio. So any of that stuff is always very cool. And it's hard not to. I mean, even to this day, that licensing art is, you know, out there. There's group shots that me and Ryan did that will haunt. It, they, I say haunt us, but people, it's their favorite pieces of art, you know, like, but to us, it's like, oh, that arm's messed up. Boy, that hand doesn't look right. Those are the things we look at when we're looking at them, you know, but, uh. But after so many years, you start to just put on the same rosy colored glasses that the fans have and go, eh, it's a pretty good piece of art, you know, I'm glad they're yeah. using it. Yeah, I mean, so much, <laughs> so many of those images are embedded in my brain that like, I, I see it and it like makes me remember something as a kid, you know, so I love that yeah. stuff. What was the, in terms of like creating, like you said, like Sergeant Bananas, you know, Screw Loose, uh, Cuddly Cow, like all those kind of characters, what was the directive in terms of did they kind of just let you guys run rampant sort of and like just come up with ideas were there any ideas that you created that they didn't approve oh yeah oh yeah yeah there's a lot i mean th there's probably as many characters that didn't get in the toy line that were better than some that got in uh, which i think would be awesome to see you know like uh you know like one of these companies like you know necker you know let's do the lost years the ones who didn't make it into the toy line uh yes. But yeah, yeah. Um, so generally, you know, playmates would send out, you know, Carl Aronian uh, to to visit us or come play, as we used to say. He's coming out to play with us, uh, and he'd come out for about a week, and he'd have their wish list, and he'd probably, I think, they already would give it to Barner Studios, you know. So they'd kind of give, we want to mutate these things, and you, we'd try to come up with themes or whatever to do it, and occasionally. It would ping pong back and forth from Varner to us and then us to Varner, depending on what Playmates was seeing there. You know, like, uh, you know, things went through changes. I know, uh, you know, uh, you, you, you'd start with a character that you liked and at the time you got done. You're like, it's kind of the same thing, you know, but uh, it, it was it was fun. But it was always nice to kind of get the, the wish list. And I always I always moan a little bit because I was. Ryan has so many toys and I call them his babies because at the time I had three little kids. He had no children. And I'm like, that's why he got to do all the toys. That's why he got to, <laughs> he was working on toys all the time. I was working on kids. Uh, it was a blast. And again, it, you know, I, we did a bunch, I did, uh, we did a bunch of stuff. I did a model kit of like a big daddy Roth. I don't know if you're familiar with big daddy Roth stuff with the big bulging out eyes. They did turtles like that with the pizza shooters on their chest. Yes. The I remember that one. Yeah. So I did a piece of art back in the mirage days called ninja nutcase and it was a turtle in the turtle van kind of popping out he's giant popping out and the he's chased driving trying to chase down the shredder and uh carl that playmate's always like that so he's like can you can you turn the van into the turtle van make the turtle a little less aggressive um I, we'll make a model kit of it you know and i was like oh that'd be so great so i did that and that never happened but then that season the turtles with the bugged out eyes came out and i'm like well those are my stupid turtles but they just made them pizza shooting turtles instead of the model kit you know and i was like oh i wanted my model kit but uh you know there's all kinds of stuff like that you know that that just didn't i mean i had a character codename chameleon usually if you got into an archie book he was in a couple of archie books you got made into a toy he never got made into a toy and i'm like oh i wish he that's one that i i wish would have actually happened and never happened but yeah, NECA needs to make some of those. I, I would love to see some of those. Design. I mean, NECA is creating some awesome ones. Like, they're hard to find. I never, like, my buddy always goes at, like, 6 in the morning. I know. <laughs> it's a sickness. I hate that I buy them. 
You know? I would buy them if they were in the store, but I can't get to a store that early to go get the toys when they come out. So I, I well, believe me, that that's why I, it, you know, like the Mirage Studios ones. Like I, I'm like, oh, I, I, I think I, the first one I bought was one of the the cartoon Splinter in the Baxter Stockman. I just loved all the stuff that they put in there, like the Renaissance book and all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Next thing I know, I'm like, man. Yeah. Give me the next one. Come on, I need a couple more. Just give me a couple more of those. Come on, you know. And I was buying them all, you know. And I think I finally got into the rationalization when they did the Mirage and the Adventure series. When I'm like, oh, these I want. You know, I, I could get rid of the rest of them, but I just loved like seeing Renette. Although they yeah. gave her that stupid brown costume, I'm like, why the mm -hmm. hell did they do that? I know they did a blue one exclusive for something. I'm like, reverse it. Give the brown one to everybody else. The blue one, that's how her colors were originally in the book, you know. So. Very cool. I mean, I, I'm like you though. I, uh, I, I've driven many, many, to many, many targets to try to get the Tercera Zog, the Triceraton. Yeah, my buddy has him. Yeah. And the mutual. Well, I had to. I went to eBay. I was like, all right, I've driven, you know, to three targets, and they're in different ones in another state, and you know, still, I, I found everything but them in the mutated shredders, and I'm, I have a soft spot because I painted the covers. For return to new york and i always loved zog and i love the mutated shredders and stuff so it's like oh i can't even believe they're making these so I yeah know. i'm just as bad as you guys i feel i feel like the, you know like why am i buying NECA stuff you know it's like i used to get this stuff for free and yeah. i give it away because i had too much of it you know but now it's like oh i'm buying turtle stuff it's just embarrassing at times you know so i mean i love to hear that though because it, it just shows that you still have such a love for the characters and stuff you know what i mean I, like look at your office like I, I i keep looking at you but i'm at the same time i keep staring at the art behind you like i can't keep my eyes off it um <laughs> yeah, it's just, and you know who they're making the naked toys for? They're making it for adults. They're not making it for kids. Oh, 100%. 100%. I mean, uh, you know, I, I've been talking to Tim Laddie, who's doing the Saturday morning cartoon book, because he wants to uh, get some toys made of some of the characters that they're adding to the thing. So he's been talking to Playmates and talking to NECA and stuff like that. And yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you should, Playmates should be doing that better. You know, like yeah. putting out a really, you know, good high end version. I mean, I did. A uh, and Laddie keeps telling me, "Oh, you know, you got to get that that made." So uh, I did some art for um, limited run games for the Shredder's Revenge. I created like a playset, as and I called it Dead End Alley. You know, so it looks like kind of like what would have been uh, similar to the Turtle Sewer set, but it's an alleyway. Oh, nice. And uh, and I was and and and, and Tim Laddie's like, "Playmates, you just make that. That would be a great new playset." You know, I'm like, but it's big. It's going to be a small fortune but i'm like if they do it right they're selling it to 40 year olds they're not selling it to little kids you know i mean the occasional rich little kid will get one but i mean for the most part i don't know why they don't play the game that neca and and super seven are doing you know and it's weird man it's weird i definitely don't yeah i don't understand it i, I don't either i mean i i have uh the last rolling figure that playmates did and i'm like oh it's not even close to the NECA ones you know that, I, know. That they I have did. both yeah. i have yeah. both yeah the NECA one like and I, no shade like i'll buy both because I, I love last yeah. Ronin, but like you don't you look at them and it's like neck is just like they're putting more into it it's kind of like with mcfarland toys you know like he puts in the work the design's really good like yeah do yeah. it you know like if people yeah. will buy it oh 100 percent. i, I and it's not like the sculptors aren't around hell you can 3d print the things now and and you know do stuff so it's not like it used to be where small fortune for sculpting then tooling it up you know it's a little easier now to do that so uh, maybe they will i know that you know the, the new movie's coming and the toys look good you know they look they look pretty close to what the the new movie looks like so it's gonna be kind of interesting to see i kind of want to ask you before we get um into some of my other questions what's your first reaction to uh the new turtles movie i know a lot of people are kind of divisive on uh whether or not they like it or not you know like i mean it is different right it's definitely different Hundred percent. I'll tell you what. It, anything is a massive, gigantic leap and bound over the last two movies. Yes. You know, yes. that's all I can say. You know, okay. so even if you have a tiny, if you have any issue, it, it would be tiny to me. Um, I mean, the second of the la latest two issues, a little more fun with Bebop and Rocksteady, and a little more cartoony. Not that I needed a cartoon movie, but the first one's just so bad. Um, sorry. Sorry. That's okay. I, I agree. <laughs> um i you know like i was jokes to shrek helps um so i mean i kind of dig 
I like their their I, their bodies are a little wonky. Like the lower half of their bodies, for some reason, don't seem thick enough. Mm -hmm. um, but their faces and stuff are really good. I thought that that the animation there was really nice, and the I love the interplay of the characters. You know, like there's something happens to John Tell, like somebody threw something, and he's like, ah, you know, and you're like, oh, you know, they seem more like teenagers. They're still doing stupid things, you know, uh, mm -hmm. aside from being ninjas, like all good teenagers are. You know, like let's just see the stupid thing. If I do the stupid thing, I'm not supposed to. What happens? You know. Uh, I, and I kind of dig that, and I figured that would be, you know, Seth Rogen and his writing team, you know, because I mean, it's super bad meets the turtles, you know. So yeah, it, I know yeah. it's not that, but you know, it's kind of cool that he's a voice. He's what Bebop or Rocksteady? With the, he's a uh, Bebop, yeah, Bebop, right? Yeah, yeah. you know. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. It looks like fun, you know. And I think we, you know, I mean, my favorite version of the Green Boys is the 2012 Nickelodeon series. You know, that is, I don't know, they did everything right. You know, I mean, I, I, you know, I got to meet Ciro Nelly at, um, at Granite State and, you know, nothing. I, I said, you made the flesh o -matic work. How does that happen? You know, that was the stupidest toy on the planet and you put it in an episode, you know, so you had to, you know, bow down to them. Uh, I, you know, so I, I, I would have loved a movie of that, you know, like of, of that version of them that would have been great. You know, I would have loved to see two hours of that. Because they, they just, I, I thought, I mean, they brought every version of them together in that, in that series. That's hard to do. It's yep. hard to do. You know, yeah. I mean, it, it's very hard to do. And they managed to, you know, pull characters from the, you know, the 20, you know, 2003 series. They brought stuff from the original storylines that I didn't think they could do. They did, you know. So I, I was, hands down, my favorite thing to watch, you know, like, as far as that, you know. I mean, the first movie perfect yeah that's that's my favorite that's that's like the high water mark for me like i i constantly like if i would not mind them doing another live action with somebody in a suit to be honest with you you know I, like i don't want it cgi hybrid it hybrid it do spider-man have them in the suits and when they do the crazy stunts that you can't do in the suit which they did just about all, all of them but you can do a little bit of cgi you know for a crazy phonetic you know fight scene you know or something like that that'd be fine you know i'd be fine with that but i mean yeah i i, I just don't get why they don't do that because they were perfect you yep. perfect and it holds up surprisingly hold well up. i mean i will rewatch movies from that time period that i thought were better than the turtle movie and rewatch them like why why did i think this was a good movie it's a horrible it's not horrible but it's not nearly as good as the turtle movie that you know i've had the good fortune of rewatching. you know i did a, an event at a small little theater thing um for the anniversary, uh, oh, you nice. know, pre-COVID, just pre-COVID. And uh, and I hadn't probably watched it for years all the way through. Probably when my kids were little was the last time I might have watched it all the way through. And then I wasn't watching all the way through. They were jumping on top of me and not watching the movie. So, uh, you know, it was, it, you know, good, good 25, 30 years about, you know, that I, before I, I had seen it. And it was pretty cool that it held up pretty good, you know. Yeah, I watched it. Actually, I watched it during the pandemic when I had COVID because I couldn't leave my bed and I rewatched the first two and I just like I remember I like the first one was just so good you know I like the second one but the first one was really the best yeah, I see the second one to us just it was such a big drop off you know because they had to make it they made it quickly and they made it more for kids you know I mean there's no weapons there's a lot of fights with you know pepperoni and pepperoni nunchucks and stuff like that which I get because we were going through the you know, Mothers Against Violence thing in the first movie got, you know, crazy at that time. And I think now, like, oh, my God, the movies I watch now, the Mothers Against Violence now? Yeah. How could, you know, <laughs> this, our, you know, the turtle movie would have been G minus. It would have, it's, too, it's too unviolent. Let's add some violence to get it up to G level, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I always find that very weird. But it was the time period, you know, was, we were label, labeling record albums, you know safer people and you know all that stuff so uh you know we're going already going after video games so yeah well <laughs> i mean i that was that was my first movie in a movie theater and i was very very young my mom didn't care so like i i don't really see the argument against it but like it's funny, i don't think I anybody even... yeah i don't think anybody you know like i remember hearing uh kevin cash in the documentary talking saying that he brought jim henson 
drove out on uh, Hollywood Boulevard or whatever to buy a movie theater and was lying, kids were lined up around the block because you didn't think it would be for kids. And, you know, parents wouldn't take their kids to it. And sure enough, they did, you know, That's but right. um, it's, it is mind blowing, you know, like uh, how many people it was their very first movie. And it wasn't bad. I mean, there was violence, but it wasn't overtly bloody. There was no blood. There was no, you know, there was action yeah. and stuff. That, and dialogue was pretty tame. I'm trying to think if there was swearing at all, if anything, damn, maybe. I don't know. Can't remember any swearing either. Yeah, I don't so, think there was any swearing. Yeah. So, I mean, basically, yeah. I mean, it was, it, 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 it's pretty tame by today's standards. But yeah, you know, some, some parents had an issue with it. I remember church groups, you know, going against the terms because kids love them so much and they must be demonic. If the kids love them, they're possessing them, you know, those type of things. And it's like, just let kids have fun, people. I just know. let, it's, you know, it's crazy. They, 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 I know the fanatics, you know, they're crazy. Right. Right. You got to stop it. People are enjoying it too much. They're having too much fun. You know, are there any like uh, funny or like, you know, touching memories from, from those days in Mirage that uh, when you guys were all together that you want to share? Oh, there's far too many. Uh, you know, one one bad thing, but was always very fun. We had airsoft guns and we had like, you know, nice movie posters. We had a big old factory space. It was a, in an old cutlery building. So we had 12 foot ceilings, you know, all brick walls, big windows. And uh, Pete had come, Pete and Kevin, I don't know which one came up with this design for drawing tables that we made. We They were foam hollow core doors. So there were eight, you know, like you know, six foot doors. And then with, you know, two buys to make the frame and they were pitched at an angle, you know, so we had, we all had them. I think almost all of us, maybe Jim, I think Jim and maybe Kevin maybe didn't have one of those, but we all made them. So anyways, with the airsoft guns, Everyone had one at their ready, you know, by their drawing table, because occasionally you'd be working and you just hear the, something buzz by you and rip into the poster that was on the wall. And you're like, Mother. next thing you know, all the time, tip, up, 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 they just go off. You're flipping over your drawing table and it's a full on war. Everybody's in on it. You know, everybody that was in the studio at that time, there's those white balls are all over the place in the floor. I can't even imagine people that got that space next. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it ruined a lot of art. I had some animation art that I didn't have framed, just kind of had hung up on the wall. Bap, 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 you know, bullet holes through it. Uh, I remember Eric Talbot, he might have been yelling ceasefire to reload, but he was smiling and he popped his head up and I shot him in the tooth and his tooth bled and we laughed so I laughed so hard. He wasn't as happy about it. <laughs> uh, but we, you know, we always had that. We, you know... Uh, you know, as you know, the hard thing I think for us, it, you know, was we were with Kevin and Pete all the time. But as the business part of it took off with them, we lost them. You know, they were in business all the time, you know, and that was it was hard to see that, you know, like so we would get. Uh, Kevin had started when we had in that factory space, Kevin started Tundra downstairs. So we wouldn't see him. He'd be at Tundra. He might come up to visit him once in a while, but he'd be mainly at Tundra. <clears throat> but Pete would come out of the meetings usually around lunchtime and he'd come over. We had a basketball hoop. So we occasionally, you know, uh, play horse or pig, you know, to uh, see who's paying for lunch. I, I, I have to say, I never paid for lunch, uh, but you know, Pete would want to go out to lunch. And then we'd either go to Toys R Us and go peruse the, you know, toy Lyle or whatever. And then that would turn into, let's go have a drink. And then the day was shot. Um, but it was fun to do that because we knew that Pete wasn't getting time in the studio with us, you know? So it was like, yeah, we'll do that. And, you know, so that would, that was nice, you know, to be able to do those type of things. We just, we had a blast. I mean, we had barbecues at people's houses. The first Thanksgiving when everybody was together was at mine and my wife Denise's apartment. And we put together two tables and we had like two turkeys and everybody came, you know, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of that type of stuff. You know, the, we had Yankee swaps at Christmas, big Christmas parties, you know, Again, it was it, we were family, you know. Like I said, we we uh, loved like brothers. We fought like brothers. We fought like brothers. We loved like brothers. We loved like brothers. We fought like brothers, you know. And uh, you know, always, you know, everybody had their moment. You know, everybody had a moment where you, did, you know, you're just like you just shook your head and like, uh, he needs his time, you know. Yeah. But but most of the time it was it was just a blast. It was a blast, you know. We just had fun. Yeah, it looked. I mean, like I said, it looks like fun. It sounds like fun, you know. Like it just it's. And that's why the comics reflected that, you know, it's obvious that that's why all the product reflected the 
the joy and the camaraderie that you guys experience, were experiencing. hundred uh, percent. I mean, nobody gets, I, you know, I was actually talking to Jim, we're, we're doing the cover um, together and, uh, you know, we were talking yesterday and I said, I, you know, you, we forget how lucky we are, you know, like, cause I, you know, now we talk to younger artists that are, you know, putting out their book and they're working full-time jobs. And, at, at, you know, after their kids go to bed, they get to sit at their drawing table and, and start producing what they really love and want to do. And I said, we were just so fortunate to like get in the owners were just putting us to work constantly. I mean, they, they created tales because there wasn't enough work for Ryan and Jim. You know, mm -hmm. and it turned out to be a great book. There was, and that gave us, a, you know, Leatherhead and Rat King and a bunch of other different characters. And, um, you know, so, I mean, that that type of stuff was, it, it just was so great. You know, we we had a, we worked for the owners. That's And the owners were artists. You know, they weren't, it wasn't a corporation. You right. know, so, you know, it was, the, we could argue and, and say, no, ah, and they would go, oh, well, and argue back, you know, and then might side with us or, or say, no, you got to do it this way. But 90, you know, it was just great that we could do that and not have to worry about losing our job. Like a lot of people, you know, so, uh, and again, uh, five good years would have been great, but, you know, here, you know, on the outer edge of, you know, 38 years, a lot happier, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm so glad they didn't, they didn't uh, do that. Mar I heard recently about that Marvel deal. I'm so glad yeah I, I went down for that lunch and, and it was yeah i was kind of you know like they just wanted a printer is basically it you know yeah. it was a whole missed thing but they just wanted to draw and not have to you know because i mean we would get all the books shipped to you know rather it was our apartment kevin and i's but mo most of the time it was pete's house because him and janine had a house and it was in the basement and we would have to cut open every box and count every book to make sure the printer didn't short us so I'm always amazed that any books are, you know, tens are graded that high because we had to pull out every book and count and then put them back in the box. And then we can turn, break down those boxes to ship books directly to shops, you know, so we'd have to take them back out again, put them into box and ship them, you know. So it does, it is funny, you know, when I think about all that, that there's nine eights and stuff out there, you know, uh, yeah. up to books. So, Yeah. And if there's anything, like, if you could choose, like, a particular favorite TMNT comic or project that you were directly involved in creating, what would you choose? And then maybe one that you weren't involved with as well. <laughs> uh, or the, the, that aren't involved with part is a lot harder um, because I had something to do with a lot of stuff. Rather, it was simply lettering or coloring or whatever. Um, okay, top three. Top three. Well, that? I mean, I, I love the run, the Return to New York series. That's that, one of my that, favorites. That, that is, you know, I mean, I think it was, you know, everybody at the top of their game. To me, uh, it, it's just, it's probably, I think it's as close as we got to perfection as a studio. I don't, I may be wrong. Other people might say something different. Um, and uh, Jim Lawson always hates this, but I, my favorite, like, character is Rat King. So the very first Tales book, Rat King, book issue i painted the cover and i fell in love with it and me and jim were going back and forth like if i painted the cover if he if, you know pencil and ink did i got you know he got one i got the next one i got the next, you know so we were back and, and that one ended up being one of his and i was ready to swap a cover but then he gave it to pete for christmas and i was like oh oh my rat king cover is now hanging in pete's house oh but i always loved that particular cover and i just love that character and I got to do a short story, ink, ink, uh, a short story of Jim's with Rat King. And I think that that's not, but I, that's always one of my things. You know, I just uh, dug that, you know, really, really, that's, that's one of my favorite characters. And he doesn't, he, I don't know why. I just like the look of him. And I like the storytelling, that, that particular book, I Monster. Just one of my favorites. Yeah, it's a great one. How yeah, about one gonna, that you weren't involved with? I'm going to go with Jim again. Um, his The Blind Sight books that he did I, I wish i could find those those, those things yeah. are so expensive yeah i mean those it's just beautiful again you know and again jim styles changed so much through the years mm -hmm. um I, I always loved jim stuff you know but uh just that storytelling with the 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 black and white and stuff you know like it's just it's beautiful you know and i you know like we all argue with them how you oh you know jim's just, just modest as modest can be you know but um yeah, that's that's a, that's another great one. I mean, there's 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 a lot more, but I mean, those those just quickly come to mind, you know. Right. But I mean, yeah, Return to New York, 
it really did feel like we were that was you know probably you know if you were to prime to pick prime mirage i would i would lay it right in that that category right in there yeah i'll co-sign that i mean that's one of my favorite uh turtle storylines ever the covers are great the interior the mm. writing everything about that storyline is just phenomenal so are you how about the idw series i mean you kind of talked about the 2012 cartoon you know like how they incorporate a lot of stuff i think that's kind of what the idw uh run has been doing too they pull from so many different things right yeah yeah and again i i would like to say that i've been a uh a diligent reader of that series. I really have not followed it. I, I don't know why. Um, don't just don't, I, I, uh, but I do, I do see, I mean, they brought in the mutanimals and they've brought in other stuff in there. So I, I mean, it is very cool that they, they brought in all that in, you know, although I almost feel like this should be a multiverse, you know, turtle, I, you know, because, so. you know, I mean, they kind of touched on it with, you know, when Pete did turtles forever, yeah, uh, at the, the 2003 series, you know, we got a multiverse there, and then it was repeated in the 2012 series. So, I almost think that they're over clogging the property a little bit by doing too much in that, you know, because you're not giving everybody their due diligence, so to speak, you know. So I, I mean, I I, I haven't read them, but I just feel like I like the multiverse. I like the Saturday morning stuff that IDW is doing right now. You know, like that kind of fills that void that has been missing from the Archie series and that, that stuff. And, and again, like I said, Tim Laddie and the team there, uh, Sarah, and I can't, God, I can't think of the writer. I'm sorry. Um, but they're doing a great job. You know, they're doing a fantastic job on that and that's fun. I just feel like, yeah, they could probably split that license even more, yeah. you know, but they've got the Jenica stuff. They've got all that stuff. They could really tell a lot of different stories with the license. Not that, Hey, not that IDW isn't trying to use that turtle license as much as they possibly can. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, you know, they are they are using it up. I definitely agree. But I, I like that multiverse uh, kind of aspect. And I do think, because look, I love I love all Turtles comics, but there are times where I would just like the four, you know, like where the focus is kind of on them. Yep. And I feel like there's yep. so much going on at times where yep. they almost yep. feel like they're not the main focus. You know, and I know, like... you know, I, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. You know, you get to pare it down. Sometimes stories, story arcs get so big and so involved with so many characters that, you know, when it's like that, you, if you want the four turtles, you might get two pages out of the whole issue that actually have the green boys in it. And the rest are other, you know, storylines, you know, working together to try to go, which is fine. But I think, yeah, it's too much sometimes. Again, I haven't read them, so I can't, I, I don't want to preach about it but yeah I, I think it is nice to like like tales was tales was a beautiful thing you had the regular story arc going and these were the stories that didn't get into the regular story arc and they're self-contained one issue mm -hmm. so you kind of like ah done i know who rat king is now oh cool i know who's that you know so you could kind of and that was the idea behind it was to you know not have an ongoing story arc which is fine but to have the four boys just do something quick and have it be over with so that, I mean, I, I think that would work very well. But again, you know, I, I don't run IDW and don't claim to. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I yeah, you know, I like I said, I love the Turtles comics. I'll buy all Turtles stuff. But yeah, sometimes like I want just the, the four main guys. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it seems like they could be doing that, you know, pretty easily. You know, like, um, and again, I, I know with the Saturday morning stuff, you know, talking to those guys and I, I hate to bring them up. But I've had a lot of contact with them. But they're such gigantic turtle nerds, you know, so they're trying to get in as many Easter eggs as humanly possible. And the uh, editor of the publishing stuff at Nickelodeon, I met him, Jeff, super nice guy, just as big a turtle nerd. So for him, when they put in all the things they think they, they've overdone it, he adds more in, you know, so they're just totally, they're just bla having a blast doing that. And I think that's what the fans, are, their fans are going to eat that up and they do eat it up, you know, because... Yeah, definitely. They, they sense it, you know, like, I can't believe in the background I saw black, you know, and, uh, you know, so it's, that's fun, you know, that's fun for them, you know, like for everybody to kind of consume. And I think it needs more of that, you know, like more, and like you say, I, I think it would be great to just have, I'd love to see those, like the, the one-offs, like, you know, Kevin and Pete did with individual turtle story, you know, like a Raphael and a Donatello, but just one-off, you know, like micro series as they call them, you know, they don't have to be two or three issues, just boom, here's a story that happened when Don, you know, Donatello went out, you know, went out to get parts of the junkyard, he ran into, blah, you know, that type of thing, you know, so 
this yeah. it, you know there's a lot of that type of stuff that could be told kind of going backwards into the old style and older story you know so and again I totally it seems agree. like you as a fan wouldn't mind consuming it so yeah definitely i'm, I'm here for all of it dude so <laughs> yeah. um so well, before we kind of wrap up, I, I'd love to talk about like kind of what you're doing now. Um, like sure. you have your Shellback Artworks, obviously that you yep. that you run, um, and kind of like what what you're up to. Really. Right now, do you know do a lot of cons? Um, this year, a few less. I mean, if anybody who wants to get me to a con, please invite me. Uh, you know, we're happy to. I'm happy to come. I, I enjoy that. That's that's a fun thing. I do a lot of commission work. Um, and as I mentioned, you know, I've been doing stuff. It's kind of nice these younger guys now are in power positions and they find that I'm still alive and upright and hey, can you do this? And so that like, you know, with a limited run and I've, you know, done, done some other stuff for some other companies, which is, it's fun for me because it, you know, kind of brings back the old days. Uh, I've been doing some non-turtle comic stuff for, uh, uh, I, do you know Ben Bishop? Yes. You know Joe Schmalky? Uh, no, no, not just I know Ben Bishop though. Okay, well, they're part of the I call them the Young Boys art guys. They they live kind of close to me here in Maine, so uh, I hang out with them. So I've done there was a book called Murder Hobo, and I've done some stuff, it covers and interior stuff. But for that, that was a lot of fun because it's very cartoony. Actually, it's kind of up over my shoulder, the yellow thing up over here. Yeah, that's a Murder Hobo cover, um, based on a Frazetta painting. So yeah, that, I mean, cons are, are great. I just, you know, we, me and my wife, Denise, our, again, our kids are all adults and we have too many pets, but our daughter comes and watches our pet. So we try to put a pin in every state, you know, so we're trying to hit everywhere and try and I enjoy it. I mean, we have a great story to tell. I love the fans. You know I mean? It's hard not to feel good when people come up to the table and they're very excited to meet you, you know, nobody's coming yes. up and you know, swearing at me and pointing fingers or anything. So um, I'm pretty good about that, you know. So the fan base is great. You know, we we have been doing it for years, but it's it's nice to get out and do that. So that's that's something that I I have enjoyed. And again, don't mind getting invited. We always, we've done shop signings and stuff like that. We were in, went out to Arkansas for just a day shop signing, which seemed weird to me, but it was wonderful. We had met a lot of wonderful people. And, you know, so it's, it's always great. It's great to kind of... Um, Good, good to do that you know and great to you know have the fans want to see us yeah i mean i i like i said at the beginning like i'm super appreciative every time i get to talk to creators like yourself and i love talking turtles so this has been an absolute blast and i want to thank you again so much for doing uh, this Ryan, it's, been, uh, it's been a blast so any any time i you know this has been it's i you know like i said we've been very fortunate we have a great history uh because of you know four green things that lived in the sewer uh, and the rat father. So, you know, I mean, it's fun stories to tell. I mean, like I said, for us, it's, it's, it, it's hard to be upset or angry or anything, just happy and proud of what we did. You know? Hell yeah, man. Well, thank you so much again. And I'm going to drop all the links down below for where people can find you online. And um, definitely would love to do this with you again sometime in the future, man. Anytime I, I get more stories we can come up with. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> all right. We'll see you, man.